In this video, we're looking at osmosis. This is Mr. Philip Koma, the excellent tutor. What are the objectives for this tutorial video? We're going to define osmosis. We're going to look at the types of solutions. We're going to look at effects of the solutions on an animal and plant cell. Without wasting much of your time, let us begin. So the first question is, what is osmosis? What is osmosis? Osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a selectively permeable membrane. So in this case, we are being told that water molecules are moving from where they are highly concentrated to where they are less concentrated. Isn't that diffusion? Yes, it is. So to simplify the definition, we can also say that osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules through a selectively permeable membrane. That is also a correct definition. So now, they are mentioning something in this definition, which is water potential. They are saying that osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of what? Of high water potential to a region of lower water potential. Now the question is, what does water potential mean? Water potential is the amount of water molecules in a solution. That's what water potential is. There is nothing confusing. Water potential simply refers to the amount of water molecules in a solution. So let me give an example of, let's say we've got two cups, yeah? We've got two cups. So we've got cup A and cup B. These are the two cups that we have. And then in cup A, let us say we've got two water molecules. In cup B, let's say we have four water molecules. Between the two cups, which cup contains more water molecules? You will agree with me that cup B has got more water molecules than cup A. Therefore, in this case, cup B has got high water potential than cup A. Are you following? So, water potential simply refers to the amount of water molecules. We are now talking about the number of water molecules. The amount of water molecules molecules so keep that in mind so if we say high water higher water potential that simply means there are more water molecules if we say lower water potential that simply means there are low water molecules keep that in mind my excellent student let us move on now let's look at the types of solutions now, what you need to understand is that our cells can be exposed to different kinds of solutions. And when they are exposed to these solutions, they are going to, you know, react in a certain way or they will change in how they look. So before we look at how these cells are affected by the solutions, let's first look at the solutions that we are talking about. So the first solution is hypertonic solution. What is this solution? So hypertonic solution, it's a solution with low water potential than a cell. So it has got low water potential when you compare it to a cell. So in this case, what we mean is this. Imagine this is a solution. By the way, a solution, it is made up of solutes, a solute and a solvent. So imagine this is our cup there and then this is a cell which is an animal cell okay so in this cup there are water molecules okay let me draw the water molecules so these are the water molecules three water molecules okay 
And then, like I said, a solution is made up of a solvent and a solute. Keep that in mind. So let me draw a solute. In this case, our solute will be sugar. Okay. So we've got sugar there. So we've got how many molecules of sugar do we have? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight uh, molecules of sugar, which is a solute, and three molecules of what? Of water. They are coming together to form a solution. So this is our hypertonic solution. Okay. Now let's look at the concentration in a cell. So in our cell, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven water molecules. We've got seven water molecules. And then let's say our solute, which can be anything. Let's say one, two, three, four. We've got four. Okay. We've got four molecules of a solute in our cell. Between the two solutions, the solution which is in our cup and the solution which is in this cell, you're going to agree with me that the solution in our cup has got low water potential, meaning it has got low amount of water molecules. When you look at our cell, it has got more water molecules, okay? meaning it has got high water potential. Are you following? So our cup has got low water potential while the solution which is in a, in our cell it has got high water potential okay so a hypertonic solution it is a solution which has got low water potential than the cell so it has got low water potential while the solution while the cell has got more water potential or high water potential okay so that's what a hypertonic solution is in other words you can look it look you can look at this in this way Imagine you are making zigolo. So zigolo, it's a mixture of water and sugar, isn't it? So let's say you put eight spoons of sugar in your, in your zigolo. You're going to say it has got a lot of sugar, isn't it? It is too sweet. It is hyper. Meaning there is more of a solute than the solvent, which is water. It is hyper. It is highly concentrated. So that's what a hypertonic solution is. It is just a solution which is highly concentrated. There is more of a solute than a solvent. So you can also look at it in that way. So this is our first solution. Let us look at our next solution, which is hypotonic solution. So hypotonic solution, it is a solution with high water potential than a cell. So in this case, it is now the opposite. This solution has got more water molecules compared to a cell. So if I can repeat our drawings, so we've got our cup there, which has got a solution inside. And we've got our cell here, which has a solution inside as well. So when you look at our what is in our cup, you will notice that there are more water molecules in our cup. So we've got five, six, seven water molecules. And then in our cell... We've got three water molecules. Then the solute in our cup, we've got one, two, three. And then in our cell, the solute, one, two, three, four, five. So now, in this case, our cup has got more water molecules compared to our cell. In other words, our cup has got high water potential than our cell. Our cell has got low water potential in this case. It has got low amounts of water molecules. So, to, if you want to view it in other ways, you can say, Oh, ee, nizi golo, but mulicha be sugar ingono. Mulicha two spoons of sugar. So, it sinakonde. You even say, ah, ee, sinakonde. Because it's now hypotonic solution. So, I want you to know that Hypertonic solution or hypotonic solution, these are, these are not uh, solutions where you have a specific solute and a specific solvent. No, these are solutions that apply to anything. Even, you know, Zigolo is one of them which can be classified as a hypertonic solution or a hypotonic solution compared to the amount of water molecules. Or even, you know, juice. Juice, if there is more of, you know, juice, 
in your drink i don't know if that's correct if there is more of juice molecules of that juice than the solvent if your juice is too sweet then it is hypertonic but if it's not that sweet you want to put in more of the juice then it is hypotonic because it is not too sweet are you following yeah so these terms hypertonic solution hypotonic solution they apply to different solutions depending on the concentration of those solutions hope you are clear on that one now let's look at our last kind of solution or our last type of solution which is isotonic solution so isotonic solution it's a solution with equal concentration with the cell the concentration of water molecules are equal in this case so when we're learning about osmosis my students one thing that you need to know is that our focus are, or is, is on water molecules. So in this case, we're saying that the solution is, the, it's a solu uh, isotonic solution, it's a solution with what? Equal concentration with a cell. What does that mean? So let's say we've got our solution in this cup. Yeah. And then we've got our cell there. The amounts of water molecules in our cup is equal the amount of water molecules in our solution the amounts of water molecules are what are equal even if the solutes are more in here or in there even if the amounts of the solutes are, are not equal but the amounts of water molecules are equal so that's our fo our focus is on the water molecules and when you look at this the concentration of water molecules are what are equal so isotonic solution, it is a solution with equal concentration with a cell, meaning the concentration of water molecules are equal in both you know, our solution in a cup and the solution in our cell. So these are the three solutions that you need to know, my excellent uh, students. Let's look at how they affect our cells, both animal and plant cell. Effects of the solutions on an animal cell. Now, before I look at the effects, note that isotonic solution has got no effect. Isotonic solution has got no effect on a plant cell or an animal cell. I repeat, isotonic solution has got no effect on a plant cell and an animal cell. Okay, keep that in mind. Why am, why is it so? We've got our cup there, right? Let's say we put in a cell, which is an animal cell. Remember that solution occurs across a cell membrane. So we've got our membrane there, right? I hope you can see our membrane. This here is our membrane. Okay, so we've got our membrane. Let me draw that again. Sorry. So we've got our cup, okay, with the solution inside. And then inside this solution, we've got a cell. And this solution, which is in this cup, is isotonic solution. And inside this cell, there is also a solution. And these two solutions have got equal concentration of water. So meaning if we have two molecules of water, in our cup we also have two water molecules in our cell so the concentration is equal are you following there is equal concentration in this case this is a state of equilibrium say it with me this is a state of equilibrium the concentration which is in a cell is equal to the concentration which is in our cup looking at water molecules of course so in this case there won't be any effect there won't be any movement because when we are defining osmosis we're saying that this is the movement of water molecules from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential but in this case there is no high water potential there's no low water, or low water potential the concentration is equal so we won't see any effects that is why I said that note that isotonic solution has got no effects on an animal cell or a plant cell. 
when you put an animal cell or a plant cell in an isotonic solution, nothing will happen. Keep that in mind. Now let's look at effects of the solutions on an animal cell. So we're going to first focus on an animal cell. So the first condition that I need you to know is the one which we call cell lysis. Cell lysis. So cell lysis is a condition which is as a result of putting an animal cell in a hypotonic solution. So we looked at a hypotonic solution and we said that a hypotonic solution has got high water potential compared to a cell. So in using diagrams, this is, let me, let me draw a bigger one. So this is our cup, yeah, and then we've got our hypotonic solution. Because we're now looking at cell lysis, and we're saying that this condition is as a result of putting an animal cell in a hypotonic solution. So this is our hypotonic solution, and in this solution, we've got our cell there. Okay, now we said in our previous slide that hypotonic solution has got more water molecules compared to a cell. So we've got four water molecules and in our cell we've got two water molecules. So we've got more water molecules in our uh, solution which is in the cup. And in the solution which is in the cell we've got low water molecules. In other words, this solution which is contained in a cup known as hypotonic solution has got high water potential than the cell. Meaning the solution has got more water molecules than the solution in the cell. So what will happen? Osmosis is definitely going to take place, meaning there will be a movement of water molecules from a region of high water potential, which is hypotonic solution, to a region of low water potential, which is in a cell. So we will notice that a molecule, one molecule of water, will move from this solution going into the cell. And eventually, what we're going to have is, I've, I've erased, let me draw that again. So we've got our solution. So eventually, what we're going to have now is this. We're going to have three in our hypoton hypotonic solution and three in our cell. Because one had moved from, uh, from a... Uh, from uh, from the solution going into the cell. Now, this will eventually lead to an increase in the size of this cell because it is now gaining water. Okay? So imagine we had more water molecules. Those water molecules will continue moving from where they are highly concentrated going to where they are less concentrated. And eventually, what we're going to have is this cell will gain a lot of water to a point that it will burst. Why is it bursting? Because the outer layer, which is the cell membrane, it is not strong enough to withstand the pressure. Therefore, this cell, it is going to burst. So we'll have something like this. It will burst. The cell will burst. And this condition is known as cell lysis. So cell lysis is a condition, is a condition where an animal cell bursts after being placed in a hypotonic solution. So a cell placed in a hypotonic solution gains water and bursts. Okay, let's look at another condition, cell crenation. So cell crenation, this is a condition which is as a result of putting an animal cell in a hypertonic solution. An animal cell placed in a hypertonic solution loses water and shrinks. Remember, in this case, a hypertonic solution has got low amounts of water molecules. Okay, so to use diagrams, because that's how that's the only way you can understand. So here's our diagram there. This is our hypertonic solution. Inside this solution, we've got a cell. In this cell, we've got, let's say, two water molecules. Okay, let's say three water molecules. And then in our hypertonic solution, we've got two water molecules. Between the two, 
you agree with me that the solution inside the cell has got more water molecules. Therefore, it has got high water potential. And then this solution, which is high platonic solution, has got low water molecules, which is inside the cell. I mean, which is inside the, the cup, the cup, the solution in the cup has got low water molecules. Therefore, osmosis is going to take place. We know that osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential. Therefore, this cell is going to lose water. Water will move from this cell going into the solution, leading to a condition known as cell crenation, where an animal cell shrinks after being placed in a hypertonic solution. So an animal cell placed in a hypertonic solution loses water and shrinks. Why does it lose water? Because it has got high water potential than the cell. Uh, than the solution, sorry. The solution has got low water potential. The cell has got high water potential. Therefore, the cell will lose water. Because water will move from a region of high water potential, which is in the cell, to a region of low water potential, which is in the solution. Leading to a cell shrinking. And the condition is known as what? Cell crenation. Alright, now let's look at the effects of the solutions on a plant cell. So it is the same. It is the same thing, but the conditions, the names of the conditions are different. So cell turgidity is a condition where a plant cell does not burst in this case, but becomes fully budged after being placed in a hypotonic solution. So when you put an, uh, a plant cell in a hypotonic solution of, of which I know what of which I know that you know what a hypotonic uh, or hypotonic solution is. So if you put a plant cell in a hypotonic solution, what will happen? It will gain water because hypotonic solution has got more water molecules compared to a cell. So in this case, let's say we've got five water molecules and this cell has got just one water molecule. What does that mean? It means it will start gaining water, isn't it? It will gain water. And when it is gaining water, it will increase in size. But in this case, it won't burst. It will just become fully budged. By fully budged, we mean when you put, let's say, a container, right? Like a small container in, in the fridge. Then leave it there for like a week. Come back. You find that it will increase in size. You understand? That is now a container being fully budged. That's what will happen to a plant cell. It will become fully budged. Okay, because it has gained water. It has gained a lot of water. But it won't burst because of the outer layer, which is the cell wall. The cell wall is strong enough to withstand the pressure. So it will prevent the cell from damage. We know that a cell wall prevents a plant cell from damage. That's what will happen even in this case. It will prevent this cell from bursting. All right. So when you put a plant cell in a hypotonic solution, it will gain water and it will become fully budged. The condition is known as cell turgidity. Cell plasmolysis. This is a condition where a plant cell loses water or shrinks after being placed in a hypotonic solution. Again, Hypertonic solution is a solution with low water molecules. Therefore, it will be gaining from a region which has got high water molecules. So in this case, a plant cell which has got high water molecules will lose water. So we've got our uh, hypertonic solution and we've got our plant cell there. So in this case, our plant cell has got more water molecules, three, and our solution has got low water molecules, one. So this cell, it will lose water. Our plant cell is going to lose water, which will go into the solution where there's low water molecules. And that will cause this cell to shrink. Now the way it will shrink is in a special way. So this is our plant cell. And we know that our plant cell has got two layers, right? Let me draw that again. Let me draw that again. So this is our plant cell. And our plant cell has got two layers. It has got the cell wall and a cell membrane. So now, when this cell 
we say that it shrinks, what happens is this cell membrane will detach from the cell wall and it will look something like this. So it will detach from the cell mem uh, from the cell wall and it will shrink. So the shrinking is happening in the inside. Okay? The shrinking is happening in the inside. That is what we are talking about. Otherwise, when you put a plant cell in a hypertonic solution, it will lose water. And its kind of shrinking is the cell membrane will detach from the cell wall and the inside of the cell will, is the one which is going to shrink. And that condition is known as pl uh, cell plasmolysis. All right, my excellent students, that's the end of this uh, video. Make sure that you watch it, study the notes, and yeah, do the assignments, answer the questions, go through past papers. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the excellent tutor, Mr. Philip Kauma. Stay blessed.